Onc Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onc Live. There are several challenges in demonstrating an improvement in overall survival in metastatic prostate cancer. The first and foremost is that there are multiple agents available for patients, and so uh, if we want to test something in MCRPC, we're going to require that or allow that patients would receive subsequent therapy. That could be with any one of the chemotherapies that's available, radium-223 with cipulacil T, et cetera, et cetera. And once you begin lining up a series of therapies, all of which uh, have survival benefits, it becomes statistically quite difficult to, to demonstrate uh, survival benefits. And so subsequent therapy is a, a, a major challenge. The other major challenge in the design of phase three trials in metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer uh, is the fact that this is a chronic disease and people, uh, patients live a long time. That's, of course, a clinically good thing, but it's a challenge in terms of uh, designing a phase three trial. So when one considers initiating a trial in the current era with all of these available therapies, and we now have data to show that the median survival for patients with MCRPC is about three years, you're talking about a five or six year endeavor in order to, uh, to design, run, and, and read out uh, phase three trials. When one considers the non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer uh, clinical state, it's even more challenging because uh, that's a, an even earlier clinical state. Uh, and so the trials that are taking place in that area uh, of non-metastatic CRPC or the early symptomatic, or a, sorry, I should say asymptomatic CRPC state um, are generally getting larger, uh, accruing 1,400, 1,700 patients, and are, are taking longer. So that becomes a, a pretty significant uh, resource impediment. PSA kinetics remain a very uh, important and uh, actually just a, a very simple uh, readout that clinicians can use to help assess uh, prognosis and, and various uh, different uh, uh, areas of outcome for prostate cancer patients. Uh, in data that we just presented today, uh, we looked at a group of patients, for example, with a PSA doubling time of three and a half months or less uh, on a clinical trial that was done with abiraterone, uh, and this is a study which showed a very high rate of response. However, it, previous studies have shown that those patients with that rapid of a doubling time are more likely to go on to develop metastatic disease uh, sooner. I should also point out that there was some very interesting data presented here on alkaline phosphatase doubling time, which is also an, a very important uh, risk factor. And what that would indicate, a rapid, rapidly doubling alkaline phosphatase would indicate um, rapid uh, bone destruction occurring from, from the disease burden. And so um, there are multiple factors that the clinician can, can review uh, that can, they can use to assess uh, uh, pre, what we call pre-therapy kinetics. Alkaline phosphatase doubling time, PSA doubling time, uh, I think are the two that come to mind. The use of PSA decline as a surrogate endpoint continues to be a controversial issue. Um, and in speaking to clinicians who are treating patients, I would say the following, that the use of the PSA 50% uh, decline is very useful because if you look at uh, multiple studies where uh, you compare those patients who have a decline in PSA uh, of greater than 50% to not, uh, survival is almost uniformly better in patients who have a greater PSA decline. That probably is more effective when analyzing data from an AR-targeted drug because of the mechanism of action, because, the, because PSA is uh, driven by the androgen receptor, so it just makes sense. Uh, however, um, I think it's a very useful marker for, for, for physicians who are in practice or trying to counsel patients as to whether or not the therapy that they're receiving uh, is working. Now, one exception to that, there's two, ex two exceptions to that. Uh, the first is uh, uh, radium-223. Radium-223 was not administered based on uh, PSA changes. Treatment in that trial was not discontinued because of rises in PSA or declines in PSA. Uh, treatment was administered based on palliation and, uh, and schedule. And so when I'm treating a patient with radium-223, I don't declare that the therapy is not benefiting the patient if their PSA goes up. The other example is cipulacil T, which as an immunotherapy uh, with a survival uh, benefit that's been demonstrated in clinical trials, uh, there was no change in, um, in PSA that was discernible for patients who were receiving this treatment. 
Therefore, when a patient uh, asks me after they've received sapulosil T uh, if they've benefited because their PSA went up, I state that we don't know, uh, but we can assume that perhaps they did benefit and it's not reflected in the PSA. So that's a very common uh, question I get from clinicians is, is what to do about PSA in patients who've had sapulosil, and, and simply the, the answer is uh, there's really uh, no reason to pay much attention to it.